Hey there, I guess you're here today to take a look at a watch with me. In particular, you're probably here to see an homage watch inspired by the watch featured in a um, famous Quentin Tarantino movie. This watch. E nope, sorry, wrong movie, wrong watch. <laughs> I'm talking about this watch. It's uh, the Detroit Mint Bullhead, inspired by the Citizen Bullhead, Brad Pitt or in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Check it out. Pretty cool, right? Now, I'll admit, I saw that movie. Um, do not remember the watch at all. I, didn't, I paid no attention to that. Uh, I hadn't even realized any sort of watch was associated with the movie until um, a couple months ago. I started looking around uh, for bullheads. Just because bullheads are inherently cool. I wanted one for my own collection. The fact that it was on Brad Pitt didn't make it any cooler in my mind. You know, who did notice Brad's wrist, though, was uh, Dave Deagle. He's the owner and the founder of Detroit Mint. And I'm, I'm thankful he noticed it, because uh, it inspired him enough to go ahead and make this version. This, in particular, is the Detroit Mint Bullhead Mechanic. You'll see right under the Detroit Mint there, it says Mechanic in red. Now, there are a lot of other reviews floating around on YouTube. The very similar looking watch put up by Detroit Mint. It's called the uh, Detroit Mint Mock, as opposed to the Mechanic. That's the quartz version. You'll notice this one, the mechanical version, only has two subdials. The quartz version has a third one down at the bottom. That's the easiest way to tell them apart, really. Now, before we go any further, let me also let you know that I am in no way sponsored by Detroit Mint. Um, both I and my bank account can uh, very much confirm that I definitely paid full price for this thing. It's about 500 bucks, which... Uh, this is about double the cost of the uh, quartz mock version. Whether you think the price difference is worth it or not, though, is entirely up to you, your priorities. I mean, I personally have no aversion to quartz. I wear quartz for everyday wear sort of work watches. Uh, Timex, Casio. Um, up until recently, I was wearing a Citizen solar powered field watch all great stuff but uh for like weekends special occasions i tend to lean more towards mechanical stuff so the big question with this one as opposed to all the other reviews reviewing the quartz is uh what's going on with the actual movement inside this before i actually bought it i did some looking around on the detroit Mint website it didn't really say a whole lot other than that it was a modified clone of a 7750 movement now if you're a watch guy like me and in particular if you're a cynical watch guy like me uh you know that when they know when they don't specify the country of origin that usually means china and uh typically that would deter me from uh, buying a, a watch especially something in this price range you can get some decent Swiss made uh, movements and watches of the same price. Not gonna get anything that looks like this though, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, you know, the Swiss, the, even the Japanese, they come with much, much more prestige than uh, the Chinese movements. But um, I went ahead and I pulled the trigger on this anyway for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I do already own a Chinese Seagull Chrono. I've had it for a while. Uh, very happy with it. It keeps good time, looks good, functions fine. Um, so yeah, Chinese can on occasion make a good product. The other thing that um, made me go ahead and buy this was the warranty that Detroit Mint offers on these things. Let me get that for you real quick before we look at the movement. So we can read this together. I think it's pretty insane. Uh, this is actually, this is what came with it when I bought it. 
This is the warranty page. So basically, like with many things, 90 days, free, no charge, just replace and full refund. But then you get into after that 90 days is over, after the initial warranty period, uh, cover, the watch will be covered after the initial warranty period and shall not exceed $75 for any repair on the watch. After that, for the life of the watch, all service and repairs will be completed at the Detroit Mint Shop. Once the product is returned, reserve the right to replace your watch. New model of the previous model or components no longer in stock. Anyway, that's pretty insane, man. For a mechanical watch, not to exceed $75 ever. I mean, plus it's like in-house at the Detroit Mint, so there's no overseas shipping, no third parties to deal with. Excellent, excellent. But you're hard pressed to find a deal like that. So even if it does turn out to be a dud, but I've had this thing for now for a while. It's functioned flawlessly. Beyond that, I did reach out to Dave via email a couple of times after I bought this thing. Just ask him questions about it because I was interested in the movement. Uh, and he managed to, uh, he went more in depth about what the movement actually is. Here we can see it. And he defined it as, let me get the paperwork on it. A regulated Shanghai 3L, a modified regulated Shanghai 3L movement. Um, that's basically the clone 7750. And he says that he worked with Shanghai to modify it in order to get it into a bullhead style design. And everything that comes in uh, gets quality controlled, quality checked again at De uh, Detroit Mint. And then he actually regulates every all these movements down to um, plus or minus 10 seconds a day. He challenged me to test that, which we are going to do. I do have a time grapher and I'll put this on it in a few minutes. Not the fanciest design in the world, but it's been functioning flawlessly so far. We'll see um, what the numbers are once we put it on there. Now, before I get the time grapher out, let's just run through some basics on this thing. 40 millimeters across, 46 lug to lug, 14.5 millimeters thick. Well, we might as well just raise, round that up to 15 once you get the band going on this. This leather cuff, by the way, I highly recommend. I mean, it's not exactly small or light, so the leather cuff really helps to spread the weight um, across a wider area of the wrist once you have it on. It's really actually very comfortable. Plus, it looks cool. Plus, I, I love the way this leather smells. It smells great. It may not be your thing if you or your girlfriend are like ethical vegans or whatever, but for a guy like me, like born and raised in the desert southwest, like surrounded by cows and horses and saddles and bridles and cowboy boots, I mean, I dig the smell of this thing. And, you know, we're going on two months that I've had it and it still smells pretty good. Something to bear in mind with this as a whole, though, it's not exactly subtle. <laughs> Whether you're just talking about the actual watch or the whole thing, including the cuff, people are going to notice it. You know, now I'm six foot five, 225 pounds. It wears smaller on me. Uh, and it's not as noticeable on me as it may be on some of you guys that are of a more reasonable body structure. But even on me, I mean, I've worn it out a handful of times now, and it gets eyeballed every time I go out. In fact, the first time uh, I wore it out, um, it was to meet a, a lady friend of mine for a Sunday brunch. And I hadn't, I hadn't seen this woman in about a year, man, thanks to COVID. And the first words out of her mouth as I sat down were, oh, nice watch. <laughs> and... I was like, oh, this old thing? Yeah. But inside, I was like, damn right, it's a nice watch. 
So, yeah, just be aware. I mean, that was a casual brunch at a casual joint, you know? I mean, I can see certain places or situations where wearing this something like this is going to come across as, like, pompous or garish, especially to people that um, aren't really in the know when it comes to watches. Now, as for setting this thing, the settings on it, I haven't had any issues. You'll notice... Um, there are two positions to the crown here. First one doesn't do anything. I think that's because, uh, from what I gather, the original movement design um, had a date function as well, which obviously this doesn't have. So that first position is just sort of a dead spot. Move it up to the second position. And setting no problem. You'll also notice that it is hacking. That little needle right there below the 60 has stopped moving. Press this in and it'll start again. There you go. Crisp chrono functions. There you go. If I were to nitpick anything on this watch, uh, it would be the small hand for the chrono minute counter. Right up here by the 30. You'll see that it's ever so slightly forward of the mark. I mean, it's it's barely noticeable, but it, uh, to me anyway, it is it is kind of noticeable. I think that and the relative chunkiness of the hand compared to the actual dial markers can can make that kind of hard to read. It's not the biggest deal in the world to me because I mean, honestly, if I really did want to do some precise timekeeping, even if this thing was on my wrist, I'd be breaking out the the timer app on my cell phone. Just using that. Here we go. We'll see it move ahead here in just a second. And there we go. See just a little bit ahead in between that first and second. Then to reset, hit this again to stop it. Boom. No problems there. Beautiful sunburst dial. Sapphire crystal on the front. No clue what the back glass is. I'm not that bothered by it. I mean, it's probably just like a mineral glass, but especially with the cuff protecting it, doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to put this aside for a second. As far as the packaging when I got this thing, it was pretty minimal. Which I don't really mind. I mean, that's savings passed on to the customer. Uh, came in this a little um, cheap pillow inside, right there. It also came with this little watch roll here. Pretty nifty. Came with um, spring bars, spring bar tool. This. Another set of uh, straps here, also marked Detroit Mint. I'm pretty sure if you got the watch just with the regular straps like this and not the actual leather strap, um, you're probably not going to get this set up. I'm not for sure, but you know this I think is the default. So upgrading to um, the leather cuff probably might include this as um, a little extra bonus. But okay, that's that. You know, and these, uh, like waxed, they're nice. Okay, give me a second to get the time grapher set up and uh, we'll get the watch on there. We can see what kind of numbers we get out of it. May also um, compare it to a couple other watches, maybe in the same general price area. See how it um, stacks up. All right, we got the time grapher all set up here. Um, Denver Mint right here, I'm waiting. I'm gonna compare a couple other watches uh, against it, see how it stacks up. First one being this Hamilton Automatic and Traumatic. It's uh, certainly $500 watch all day long. With the ETA 2892-2 movement. As ETA movements go, it's supposed to be one of the higher grade ones. 
super thin, super quiet, super smooth. In terms of my watch collection, this one is sort of like the benchmark. Um, when I first tested it on the time grapher, the numbers are just astounding, just how, uh, how good it is. So I'll give you a look at this. Just as something for comparison for a watch in a, in a similar price range. I'm going to go ahead and silence the speaker. You can see, at least at this angle, uh, when it comes to rate, obviously seconds per day, we're looking for zero or as close to it as we can get. Amplitude, generally I'm looking for, you know, anything over 200 is fine really, but 220, 240 at the minimum usually. And beat error, I want that as close to zero as well. So yeah, pretty much, I mean, that, that's you would see any beat error here very, very minimal. The rate, you know, look at that one second a day, at least at this angle. Usually if you adjust it, it'll change. It's just the nature of mechanical watches. You're going to get some variation at different angles. See, pretty solid all the way across. There we go. Zero beat error, went up to eight seconds a day. It's not terrible. That's still excellent. Anything under 10 is really considered pretty, pretty great. My primary concern usually is the beat error. The higher that number gets, the, uh, you know, it may need some help. If it gets over one, certainly. On vintage watches, you can, you'll often see that. But yeah, man, solid performer. Like I said, I, I consider this sort of the benchmark of, of all the watches that I have because it's always, it looks like a solid ride, man, constantly. It's awesome. So yeah, that is a Hamilton, $500 watch, Swiss made all the way through. That's sort of what we're looking for there. So well, let's see what the Denver Mint can do. Chinese movement. I would say that's still, still solid, man. Plus or minus zero seconds a day. It's right on target. I would say that is definitely comparable to the Hamilton for sure. Zero beat error, plus one second. Straight line all the way across. So yeah, certainly um, this tells me what I needed to know, just like Dave Deagle said, man. I mean, he's definitely got this thing regulated great. That's a slight hint of the beat error, but that's really nothing, man. I mean, a lot of, a lot of watches are gonna have higher, certainly within normal range. Nothing to be concerned about. I gained a little bit of time at this angle. That's still well within the specs.
Nice. Very good. I am happy with that. Just for fun, I also happen to have, as I said before, this is a clone of a 7750 movement. This right here is a genuine vintage Swiss 7733 movement, which is the movement that um, 7750 is based off of. Basically, this is a manual wind version of the automatic version in the Denver Mint. This one, of course, though, from the 60s or 70s, far older. I don't really know the service history on it, nor have I tested it on this machine yet. I haven't had it that long. Uh, I've been waiting to, anytime I get a vintage watch, and this is something to consider, too, if you're looking at, if you're thinking maybe you want to get an actual vintage bullhead. <laughs> If, you, if you're going to get into vintage watches, man, you need to be sure you budget a large part of your watch budget for a watch person, a watch uh, fixer, if you will, an orologist, I guess. Just like with a vintage car, man. I mean, they're, they're service history unknown, all the little mechanical parts in there, the things that need to be oiled. If you don't know how to rebuild a watch need to be sure and get yourself and befriend a watch guy who does know how to rebuild them because it's just common sense they're they're going to need more attention you're going to want to stay on top of their maintenance this like i said being from the 60s or 70s i don't know the full service history on it i do know i do want to send it off to my watch guy you can see there's a bit of a uh, a space there between the crown and the body and this is all the way in so I think somebody has messed with it in the past, but I did confirm the movement. It is a Valjoux 7733, which is a great movement. Like I said, the basically the father of the movement that's in the Denver Mint. Just out of curiosity, we'll give this a shot, see what we get. Damn. Pretty solid too. Still zero beat error. That's excellent. We'll probably see some now that it's sideways. There we go. <laughs> it sort of, sort of shows you the difference between newer watches and vintage watches. The angle of adjustment really changes things. Well, there we go. I mean, compared to a very similar caliber Swiss and um, another modern day Swiss watch, the Denver Mint seems to stack up just fine. So if um, that was a concern of you pulling the trigger on one of these, I wouldn't be that concerned. Like I said, especially with the warranty. And as available as Dave Deagle made himself, um, on e via email. Whenever I wanted to, had a question, I reached out to him. He answered uh, almost immediately, certainly within 24 hours each time. So I don't think you'd have to worry about anybody from Detroit Mint ghosting you in case you did have a problem. So that's where we stand. The Detroit Mint Mechanic. A plus in my book. Thanks for your time.